Hey guys, what's up? Kill2 again. Uh, got a little more PvP for you. Uh, something different this time. I coming, you know, We're coming off the Destroyer footage, which is cheap and was solo. And today I actually have some Demos footage, and it's in a fleet, or mostly in a fleet. I have a little solo clip at the end. So um, big flip there. The Demos is 180 mil just for the ship, and a couple bros in Drakes with me. So there's three of us. But um, a lot of you have been asking for any kind of help with manual piloting, and kind of what goes into that and while I don't think I'm qualified at all to be teaching that I feel like it's something I'm still learning a lot about um, this is a good example of some footage where it was really important to fly my ship kind of in the right way um, and I messed it up a lot but I f still feel like I can talk about it so um, I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you to start out other than we're in zero zero the demos is a shield fit it's kind of an anti-support Will Adama-esque sort of demos and I'll post the fit at the end of the video but I'm gonna go ahead and get the footage started since it's kind of long and there's plenty of opportunity for me to blab during the middle of it so I'll start it now and the first thing you're gonna see is um, excuse me mute. okay so to start out um, basically we've got a destination that's a couple jumps ahead we have one of the drakes scouting for us so he jumps the system and there's a tornado at zero on the gate and this is actually I don't know, maybe it's something people know how to handle gen generally, but um, I think usually the best thing to do is have the scout immediately point the target uh, so that he can't warp off the gate unless he's doing something weird that makes you not want to do that, and then have everyone else or some distribution. A lot of time you want to divide the gang over the gate, over both sides, so that he can't get away, usually with something fast enough to catch and keep him on either side. But in this case, we just both of us that are on this side of the gate are going to tackle this tornado when he comes in. And the guy on the other side is going to stay on the other side because a lot of time what's going to happen is the tornado is going to reapproach, jump back, and if we have to, especially with a low HP ship like a tornado, we can just bounce him back and forth until he's dead. Um, and that's more or less what happens here. He's going to decloak here any second. Uh, and it's always a good sign if they hold cloak. I feel like that's usually a good sign they don't know what to do. If they decloak immediately, it's a little less uh, of a good sign. What's funny is I actually don't even put the point on him. Uh, I don't know why, but I just didn't. Uh, but luckily the Drake did, and also he's immediately reapproaching because he knows he's going to get tackled. Probably what I should have done is just not aggroed at all, and I could have followed him to the other side in case he aggroed over there. But we forced him back. But the other relevant thing that happens here, and it's always good if you can, is pay attention to what's happening in your local. And so he waited as long as he could, and then he burned back and jumped. And now the footage is picking up on the other side of the gate after my aggro, my aggression's dropped. We had the Drake on this side hold him so that we could get on the mail, which is silly. And actually, we're ten ended up being terrible here because he did some damage to the Drake and did some damage to me. But before we had jumped, about eight extra people came into local. And so that usually means someone's coming to help him out, um, which maybe means it's good that we held him. And then as we kill him, you see local jump a, a little bit, like two or three, and you saw flashes on the gate. So it's good to pay attention to that kind of thing as much as you can. And then the actual fight gets started here. So the tornado's dead. Um, this Tyrannus comes in, and I here's a mis uh, second mistake. I'm going to make so many mistakes, I'll just list them. But um, I switched to antimatter, and I think that I don't have a good feel for how the Demos the Demos's range works, and I'm used to Minmatar, so I switched to short range for the improved tracking over what would be barrage. But in this case, the antimatter's range is so low that I keep making this mistake of having antimatter loaded when I need to be at least able to do damage to 20 or 25k, which the antimatter really fails at. So we force the Tyrannus off, but aren't able to kill him. I probably should have had Null, and then I have to go back to Null because I want the ship to be operating at that range. But anyway, here's where the manual piloting comes into effect. Um, ideally, I would orbit one ship. Like if we were just fighting a hurricane in a belt, I would orbit the hurricane at like 25k. Um, but here, if I hit orbit on one of these ships, you can see they're sort of spread over the gate a bit. And if I just hit orbit, I'll wind up flying through the gate, through one of the other ships who will web me, um, or expose myself to damage unnecessarily. And I really don't want to do that. So, And in the meantime, we're fighting here. We're switching targets a lot based on aggression. This Falcon uncloaks. Uh, I burned all the way out of range to try to keep damage low on me and get them to switch targets, which works. And then I burn back in now for the Falcon. Um, but as far as the manual piloting goes, what you want to, I think, accomplish is you want to basically be orbiting you want to still kind of do that same thing orbiting does which is maintains a range and keeps you moving but you want to do it only on one section of an orbit path if you can imagine that like one hemisphere or one uh, I guess one half of what would have been your orbit path and so you manually try to accomplish that by clicking back and forth kind of across a ship so it's hard to see where my my clicks are but that's more or less what I'm trying to do is try to orbit whatever our target is on the side opposite that ship 
like the side opposite the gate from that ship. So like here I want to be 20k from this drake on the side opposite the drake from the gate. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do. And, uh, and, and the other objective is to be aligned as much as you can. So whenever that double click that, that accomplishes that orbit can be towards something you can warp to, that's ideal. So then if, if you have to leave, you can. Um, and then here I kind of dove back in to try to hit that heretic, but um, uh, that was unnecessary. He never came close enough to be an issue. And, and I accidentally, you know, by switching to him, I also had the Drake switch damage to him and that cost us some DPS on this Drake. At this point, you can see on the watch list, one of our Drakes has to warp off who's been tanking. Um, anyway, so, but we're doing fine. I mean, we've pulled this Drake way away from the gate and we're able to keep DPS on him while most everything else is 60k away. And um, if, you're, if you're in this kind of situation, what, what I'm realizing is I really need to pay attention more to the velocities. Like here, I see the Harpy moving 1800, 1900. I need to make sure I know which direction that Harpy's going and whether or not that's a problem for me. Uh, I've noticed I've made a lot of mistakes relative to that where either I don't notice a ship burning, which you'll see in just a second here with a wolf um, while I'm fixated on something else, or I'll notice a ship is burning and I'll assume it's burning for me. That happened at the start of this fight. There was a hurricane burning. I assumed he was burning for me when in fact he was burning back to the gate. And so then I hit approach on him or, or try to burn away from him and I get extra range that I don't need. Um, anyway, so this situation is good for us though now. We've settled in where we're far enough from the gate that they're not DPSing us. The drakes really should be more aggressive. They're drakes, but they're not. And then we, we kind of can try to wait for targets that have isolated themselves from this gang. And, and if we were better, if I was better, we'd be encouraging that a little more aggressively. Our drake would, rather than being 70k from the gate, would probably be 40k from the gate and trying to coax something out. Um, but like this drake here, Steve, you can see kind of in the upper left, is, is way isolated from his gang. And there's not a whole lot of risk to us to head up towards that drake and try to isolate him and kill him. Uh, as it turns out, uh, I, I do that. I head for him. But uh, I get spooked when he immediately starts shooting me and burning away from me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess when you're approaching ships, you don't need to be manual piloting. But you just don't. Basically, it's manual piloting is a means of avoiding hitting the orbit button because what orbiting does, um, and keep it range is sort of the same. Keep it range usually will move you directly away from the ship or directly towards it, so it's a, it's better than orbit. But with orbit, you end up with your ship in a random, essentially random position, because while you know the distance that it's going to be from the thing you orbit, you don't know the path that it's going to take, and that puts you at risk a lot. So you're trying to imitate orbit by double-clicking back and forth in an area that's as safe as possible. So here you can see I'm heading for this drake, and this is what I'm talking about. I'm not paying attention to the velocities on the overview, and this harpy's still moving really fast, and the wolf is moving really fast. And you can see the wolf there below the drake, below my friend in the drake, and he's burning out towards us, and I didn't even notice. Um, in the meantime, this oracle starts doing damage to me, and uh, that drake had shot me a little bit. I, I shouldn't have been so worried about the drake. I think we could have killed the drake. He was shooting kinetic, which is fine against me. I've noticed, I, I've gotten really scared of drakes, because when they shoot thunderbolt, or whatever they're called now, um, it, it does tons of damage to the demos because I have no EM resist. Anyway, and then here's an example. I think the other thing with the demos, and probably true for other hacks, any other medium turret things, is I can be more aggressive with range. I'm used to a Talos, where here the idea of a wolf being within 10k of me is terrifying. But actually, I'm happy to have the wolf within 10k of me. It just means I'm going to guarantee T tackle. My damage is going to get through one way or another, either because of my small newt or because, you know, transversal works out momentarily. And he would die. So I should have been kind of headed towards him. Um, I ended up taking a lot of damage from the Oracle and then decided to turn back towards him like at this point, which is really greedy and probably could have gotten me killed. But right there you can see me actually get the final blow on that wolf from 55k with the Demos, which is pretty sweet. Um, sweet for a lot of reasons. It's good because you can play that anti-support role from pretty far away. Um, you can threaten DPS from far away, which comes in a lot of uses. I mean, whether it's DPSing a main target. Um, or something like scaring that uh, heretic off well before he's in tacker range, it's all good. But I think I, I think I need to make the adjustment with the Demos where it's actually very strong uh, when tacklers are very close to it. As long as I'm not getting swarmed by like three Tyrannuses, I should be fine. Um, and it would be especially fine if I could like, well, Adamo's Demos have a scram on it. I can't really do a scram because you really need um, either a faction scram or links to extend the range or both. Um, I really want to be able to play a normal tackle role as well and the long points so much better for that. So 
Anyway, we're transitioning now. This is uh, this is the same group of people that are still clustered on this gate, but I just wanted to show you this trick because I really love it. It's always been fun for me, even when it hasn't worked out. But you can see um, a lot of time after a fight, when you go back to the grid, people will be sitting on wrecks that you've created earlier in the fight, and those wrecks act as um, warp targets. So I warped to my fleet mate, who is way off the gate here. Um, he's gone now, and then I noticed the Thrasher sitting by this wreck. I didn't realize how wreck, how close the wreck was to the gate, so I ended up landing 12k from everything on this gate, which is basically suicide, but um, still gives me a chance to shoot the Thrasher. I immediately want to burn away. You just want to burn off the gate as fast as you can in DPS as you burn. Um, this is a lot of times a good way to get this fight started again. People will chase me, and then maybe we end up with the Hurricane isolated again or whatever. But again, I make the mistake of the wrong ammo, and this is the this is the actual instance that really convinced me that it should be almost always null unless I'm getting orbited, because if I'd had null loaded, I would have killed that guy. Instead, I only got really two volleys of effective damage, um, and it would have been three or four with null loaded, and I would have killed him. So that was a mistake. Whenever you do end up in a like that situation, everything's happening in it in a really short amount of time. Like, you know, there's 10 or 15 seconds where we're trading damage at the most, and so heat is kind of an obvious. Um, thing to use there but i burn out no problem a rapier decloaks later and a lakisa shows up uh, or an arazu but um I, I managed to not get tackled which is pretty amazing hugan and rapier um and warp off grids so that's pretty sweet i mean i didn't get another kill but i was pretty happy i didn't die with a ship like this i just feel like it's so easy to die from from little mistakes um anyway I, yeah i don't know if that's i, I don't know if that fight shows you tons um if nothing else it shows you what you can do with just a couple people um you know like i said we're demos drake drake we have no links and we're engaging what now is you know six battle cruisers two reguns a hack and a battleship and pretty comfortable there so that's pretty awesome and and we got kills you know we killed uh tornado tornado wolf falcon drake which is great i mean that's a great result and um if they had less people or a different composition or had been more aggressive early on we might have killed even more than that so um, there's that. I'm going to pause this now right before I start the next clip, um, which is just a really short solo thing where I can hopefully talk a little about manual piloting, piloting again. Basically, this was just on our way to zero zero in Losec, and so we were spread out. We weren't warping together as a group, and I warped to a gate, and there was a pirate hurricane sitting on it. So we'll start that now. And um, here you can see the hurricane. And I, I don't know. I, I think one thing I thought would be cool to take away from this is just the fact that even something that doesn't look very favorable... Um, a lot of time is worth kind of poking at because sometimes something cool comes out of it. So what happens here is I start shooting this hurricane. And I partly think that's a fine idea because in low sec, I'm not at tons of risk, I feel like. There's not going to be like pirate interceptors for the most part that are going to come and tackle me. Um, if anything, it would be like a, I don't know, ships warping in or whatever, and I could just leave. So there's not much risk. and um, And I might get him to do something dumb or I might, pull other things to the grid that my fleet will eventually be able to show up and help me kill. What happens is a Cinnaball shows up, and I don't know how this Demos looks against the Cinnaball, but with Gate Guns on my side, I think it looks pretty good. And um, I kind of, my first reaction is I need to be able to leave, especially because the Hurricane can burn, but you can see the Hurricane's slow. He's armor tanked, which I also noticed because he didn't take any damage in armor. But I start shooting a Cinnaball. He doesn't do much damage to me, and so then I immediately am approaching. At first, I was doing what I was talking about, like kind of manually orbiting towards the things I can warp to at ideal range from the hurricane. But when, when the Cinnaball looks like I might have the edge on him, I immediately want to be approaching. So I'm overheating Microwarp, trying to get as close as I can. He's aligned and never really corrects. Like, he never hits orbit or keep it range on me, which means he flies right through me and just turns into an easy kill. He ended up being already fit. Um which, I don't know, maybe that's fine against uh, support, or even fine against me if he can maintain range, which he should be able to do. I mean, he's faster than me, but um, he said he was having a little overview trouble, which could be the case. Um, anyway, um, so then we're back to the Hurricane, who ends up just burning back to the gate, but um, I don't know. I guess I guess that's pretty much it for that. I, I, I love the ship. I ended up losing it because of all the weird uh, drops, we were getting yesterday we got a bad fight where half the fleet dropped and i lost it but i had a lot of fun in it um and i i don't know i i guess hopefully some of this is a good example of kind of how to manage range and what you can do with a small group and um to stay optimistic i mean just engaging stuff often works out favorably <laughs> um even if it doesn't look like it might so anyway i hope you enjoyed uh
I've been playing some, so hopefully more footage, more uh, more stuff coming, and uh, hopefully I have something cool for the podcast this weekend. It hasn't totally worked out yet, but I'm trying to get a cool guest for us. So, um, Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and thanks for the support. I've gotten so many uh, awesome donations and feedback in the last week or two. I really appreciate that. You guys are unbelievably cool. Um, all right, see you next time.